Welcome to the Mountain Valley News Pigskin Preview. I'm Monk Blevins, and this is Logan Wright, and we're back this week to talk a little bit of high school football. Logan, man, we're nine weeks in now, and, uh, you know, these playoff pitches are starting to make a little sense now. We're kind of seeing who we think is going to be in the playoffs. So what's your thoughts so far on the season? Well, as far as where we are right now, we're kind of getting to see who's going to make the playoffs, but there's a lot of teams out there we still don't know where they're going to be placed, uh, who's going to be a number three seed, who's going to play at home, who's going to have to travel. And a lot of that really affects your playoff games. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I tell you, you know, uh, talking about, and we, we, I think we mention this region every week, but uh, mm-hmm. 3A region 7, man, it only got crazier this week. You know, uh, the number one seed in that uh, region, New Hope, they were upset by Sand Rock this week. North Sand Mountain got beat by Pisgah. So, man, that thing is all jumbled up. But I, I think, you know, we kind of know who is going to be in there. It's just a matter of how they fall. And uh, But uh, I tell you, it's getting exciting now, and, uh, you know, some of the teams have already got locked a spot up, and so I, we're getting down to the wire here. Well, I tell you what, it's, it's going to be an exciting next couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and start talking about our games this week. And uh, you know, the first game we got, we got five will be traveling to Collinsville. Uh, you know, five comes in, man, and they put a whipping on West End. You know, and this West End team is pretty good. And, uh, but they beat them 62 to three. And uh, so, what's your thoughts on this five team? You know, we we've talked about them every week. How how good we think they are, and uh, I think we're right on it. So oh, yeah. They're definitely – they're a great team. We talk about that – it seems like we talk about that Cleveland loss every week, but it seems like they still sort of have a <clears> thorn <throat> in their side. They're still trying to prove that they're the best team in that region, and I think they are. I think if they play Cleveland again, that game might go a little differently. I think they're starting to get a few more people healthy again. They've had some injuries early in the season, but – I think they're starting to get healthier and it's showing with the teams they're playing because they're just blowing people out. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, Fife's defense had five picks on the night in that ball game and uh, the Anderson kid returned one of those for a touchdown uh, and uh, Seth Benefield, he rushed the ball seven times for 92 yards. So, you know, I tell you this, this Fife team, uh, you know, they're clicking right now and uh, you know, like you said, I think if if they were to play Cleveland ten times, I, I dare say they'd probably beat them at least nine times. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, this five team is, is on a mission, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see see what happens, you know, going down the stretch here. You know, Collinsville comes in, man, and they took a loss to uh, – to Gaston, 35 to 28. You know, the thing about that was, you know, they let Gaston jump out 15 to nothing on them right in the first quarter. And uh, so uh, what's your thoughts on Collinsville and, and what they need to do to, uh, you know, to get a – well, actually, I got the opportunity to cover that game, and I tell you, Collins will put up a fight. That game could have went either way. I know Gaston, <coughs> Gaston had some athletes. They had a fullback. They were like, he could go play college ball right now. I actually watched him score a touchdown on them, but their defense played great. Their offense was moving the ball. I know they had an injury early in that game with their quarterback, and I believe he's out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, Grant Jones, he was he was injured, and I, I did talk to uh, some of the people down at Collins today, and they said probably three to four weeks in the – and then he come back and said, well, he, that Jones thinks he might be back for the playoffs. So, uh, you know, luckily for them, that wasn't a, a serious injury that had to require any kind of surgery. And, uh, you know, this, this Grant Jones, is a, he's a good quarterback. And so uh, they're going to need him when the playoffs get here, I think. Uh, you know, one of the things, uh, uh, Trenton Nash had an 89-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. You know, he continues to play well for Collinsville. And the Reed kid and, and the Blakely Reed. kid are all playing really good. You know, uh, you know, this this game, you you know, you look at it and you think, well, Fife will blow Collinsville out. But, you know, Collinsville has got a chance to make this a ball game. And, I, and I'm not saying Collinsville's going to win, but, you know, Collinsville could, can line up and, and play with this Fife team, I think. So that's going to be a that's going to be a fun game to watch. And, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, with Jones being out, I, you know, that may may hurt Collinsville a little bit. But it'll, it'll be an exciting ball game to watch. You know, the next game we want to talk about, we've got Crossville Travin to Sardis. And, uh, man, I tell you what, I, I am tickled to death for Crossville. You know, they come in, and they were they were on a 19 game losing streak, and uh, and man, they got the big victory over. Uh, uh, well, I just went blank. White Plains. White Plains, yeah, <laughs> over White Plains, a 21 to 13, mm-hmm. and uh, boy, I tell you what, that, that's that's a great victory for Crossville, and I think you got some news for us on that game. So. Yes, uh, it's actually there are Mountain Valley News Team of the Week. Crossville lines are for beating White Plains 21-13. So, big congratulations to them. Yeah, you know, 
Coach Cloudus, I want to congratulate him. And, uh, you know, he was so excited about that game. And, uh, you know, one of his quotes was he said, I told the players, he said, man, y'all go out and celebrate this victory because I'm going to. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was a big win for him. Anytime you can get that first one, especially after you've lost 19 straight games, man, you know, you've got to be excited about getting that win. And, uh, you know, their quarterback, Gannon Porter, he had another great game. And this kid is a good quarterback, and he's he can pass the ball. You know, I know one of their weaknesses, they, they've struggled on their run offense a little bit. But. Uh, but the uh, Porter kid, he continues to play well. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's exciting for Crossville to get that victory. And, you know, like we've talked about all year, you know, once you get that one victory behind you, you, ne you never know what that's going to do for your, uh, you know, to get you going. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they, they, they're playing Sardis this week. And, hey, this may be the game that got them over the hump. So we'll see this week. That's going to be exciting to us. Uh, be an exciting game to watch. So next game we want to talk about, we got Southside traveling to Fort Payne. And, uh, man, you know, Fort Payne uh, traveled or actually was at home against Gardendale last week. And, uh, you know, Gardendale was ranked ninth in the state and sitting at 6-1. and one. And, man, it was a great football game. But uh, Fort Payne got defeated by uh, Gardendale. It was 38-28. But, uh, you know, it was a lot closer game than and even the score sounds. You know, Fort Payne had – Opportunity. It was just a back and forth game. So, what's your thoughts on Fort Payne and and? Uh... Well, I love watching this Fort Payne team play. I've got to cover a couple of their games, and they get after it. I mean, the defense swarms to the ball. We always talk about uh, Desmond Turner and how great their offense is and how good their rushing game is. But this defense, it's carried them a long way, and I think that's probably one of the reasons that score was so close because they were playing a very good team, Absolutely. and they hung with them. Yeah, you know, uh, speaking of, of Desmond Turner, he rushed for 136 yards, and uh, he set Fort Payne's single-season uh, record. He's got 1,560 yards, and, uh, you know, congratulations to him on a great season, and, uh, you know, he's going to just continue as long as he stays healthy, man. He's going to get the yards. He is he is a super athlete. But, uh, you know, the speaking of Fort Payne, you know, they actually – actually locked up the uh, region championship because Southside lost to Scottsboro last week. So, you know, they're region champs. And, I, you know, sometimes I don't know how that will affect them. They're playing Southside this week, and you knowing you're already region champs, you know, that could yeah. affect the way they play a little bit. And uh, But the, that, that'll be a great football game. You know, this Southside team is, has got a great football team. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, they we, we talk about – I want to mention Scottsboro. You know, Scottsboro – I guess you could call it an upset, but, uh, you know, Scottsboro, when their quarterback is healthy, they've got a great football team. So uh, this will be a great game this week. And, uh, you know, congratulations to Fort Payne on the region championship. And, uh, you know, Coach Ellis has done a great job there. And, uh, you know, I, I, we've talked about this. I think we'll see them make a, a big dent in the, in the playoffs this year. Uh, next game we want to talk about. And this is going to be a great football game. And, and uh, you know, we, we talk about uh, 3A Region 7. Uh, Geraldine will be traveling to Plainview this week. And, uh, you know, Plainview's coming off of a big win at Brindley Mountain. And uh, Geraldine's coming off of a big win over uh, – uh, well, I've gone blank again. I can't even remember who they're playing. They were playing uh, Sylvania. <laughs> and uh, they won 42-30 to 30 in Plainview beat uh, Brindley Mountain. I think it was 42-20. to uh, 20. And so, you know, this is going to be a huge game this week. And, uh, you know, right now both of them are sitting at 4-2 and two in the region. So what, what do you think, what does Plainview got to do to beat this Geraldine team? And, or what does Geraldine have to do to beat this Plainview team? Well, Plainview is going to have to get their offense started. Um, <clears throat> I know I believe they're on a five-game winning streak right now, and that's great because a lot of people early counted this Plainview team out. And now they're – I don't want to say they're locked, but it's they're pretty much locked. They have to. There's a lot riding on this game between Geraldine and Plainview to see who's going to be the number three seed in that region, who's going to be the number four seed. But Plainview's definitely going to have to get that rushing game started against that tough Geraldine offense because yeah. Geraldine definitely has a lot more size than Plainview. Plainview is undersized this year, but I feel like if they get that rushing game started, this is going to be a great game, and I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. You know, the Plainview team, the, the defense has played well mm -hmm. all year for Plainview, and I guess if, if there is a is a weak spot, it would be their offense. But, the, you know, I, I noticed just a, looking at stats, we had uh, Plainview had five different teams to score touchdowns this uh, a touchdown this week and five different players. So, you know, they, they've got some players that can put it in the end zone. And But, you know, this Geraldine team, you know, the Stephen Hood, man, he is a great back. And, and also they have the Austin Willoughby. I think he had three touchdowns 
this week. And uh, so, you know, this is going to be a great football game. And, uh, you know, and like I said, this this will determine who is the three seed and the four seed. And so it's going to be an exciting week for to watch that football game. Next, we've got Eider traveling to section. You know, Eider comes in, man, and they faced Cleveland last week. And uh, it was a uh, 49-12. to 12, And, uh, you know, one of the bright spots for Eider was Ryan Adams had an 84-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And uh, so, you know, it, it – you know, Eider needs a win. You know, they I tell you, they have been beat up over the last few weeks, and, uh, and man, they need a win bad this week. So what's your thoughts on Eider, and what do they need to do to be able to beat this section team? Well, Eider's coming off a couple of tough losses, but one of those was to Cleveland. And all you got to say about Cleveland is they beat Fife, and everybody yeah. knows they're a tough football team. To beat Fife, you have to be a well-disciplined football team. And Cleveland also has a great running back and a great quarterback. And Eider, they – it was a tough game for them, but hopefully they'll use it and they'll learn from it. And they're playing a section team that's kind of down right now, so maybe maybe they'll get some people back that weren't injured. Maybe they'll get their starters some breathing time, I guess you'd call it. And right. It should be a good week for Eider. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know if, if this Eider team is healthy and and hopefully they are, and uh, you know I think they should have a good week this week against Section. You know our next game we got Sylvania traveling to New Hope. Uh, you know Sylvania comes in and like I said they uh, they lost to a, a good Geraldine team, forty two to thirty last week. And uh, you know the thing about that Sylvania game was. Uh, you know, they were down early, but they made a game in the second half. They came back and scored some touchdowns and, and made it closer than, than, you know, what it was in the first half. And, uh, you know, the Sylvania team, we've talked a lot about them, but they have potential. You know, they've got potential to uh, uh, to, to beat anybody. And, uh, you know, the turnovers and, and just crazy things happen at crazy times with Sylvania. And, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, New Hope comes in, and they were upset by San Rock last week. And so, man, you know, you know, this region, you just don't know from week to week what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, uh, Sylvania will be traveling to New Hope, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough on them. It's, this New Hope uh, team, you know, uh, they've got the Browner kid at, at quarterback, which is, man, he is, he's a great athlete, and, and the, the Cotton kid at running back. And so what's your thoughts? What would Sylvania have to do to upset New Hope this week? So. They're going to have to play disciplined in the secondary because Browner is a great throwing quarterback, but he can also hurt you with his legs. He doesn't want to. He's, he, he's more of a Peyton Manning type. He'd rather throw the ball, but he can run. And I know New Hope's going to be angry after that loss last week. So I believe it was 21-3. to The San Rock yeah. Wildcats upset them, and nobody saw that coming. No. <laughs> so you know they're going to be upset after that. And Sylvania – I know their record isn't too great, but if you go back and look, they've been in every ball game. They've had a chance to win every single ball game. It's just been little things, turnovers, not getting first downs when you need them, giving up big plays, little things that hurt you. And it seems like that's affected them a lot this season. But if they can get all that fixed, this can be a tough ball game for New Hope. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and that'll that'll be a great game. And I, you know, I know Sylvania would love nothing more to travel over to New Hope and, and pull an upset. That would that would be a big win for uh, for the Sylvania Rams. You know, our next game we got Valley Head traveling to Woodville. Uh, I tell you, this Valley Head team, you know. Uh, one week I'll pick against them, you know, and and and, and the next week it, they just, you know, they, when I pick against them, they just drill somebody. You know, I picked against them this week, and man, they just put a whipping on Jacksonville Christian. It was fifty-five to forty, but that score is a little deceiving because they had jumped all over Jacksonville before, you know, Jacksonville really got going and scored any points. But uh, man, this Valley Head team, you know, Coach Graham, we talk about him a lot, and he is doing a great job with Valley Head. With, uh, you know, they've got twenty-four players on that team, and they're young. And uh, and he's done a great job with them. You know they're setting it. They're I think right now they're four and three in the region, and you know are are three and three. And with a win this week, they could lock up third place in that region in the one A class. And uh, you know, so what's your thoughts on Valley Head and Woodville this week? And I, I think too you have some news on Valley Head. So uh, yes, uh, Devin Lepps is their halfback. He rushed for three hundred and fifty three yards with twenty three carries, and he had six touchdowns. Man, that is awesome. I, you know, Those are Desmond Turner stats. Right absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He had a great night, and we want to congratulate him on the, on the great game. You know, 350 yards, I don't care who you're playing. You know, I, I don't think I could get 350 yards if I was just running up and down the field by myself. So. <laughs> He's our uh, Mountain Valley News Player of the Week for his great performance. And absolutely. congrats. Go out to you know, I, I think this uh, Valley Head team, they've got a, they've got a, a, a great opportunity this week to uh, – as they travel to Woodville to uh, to wrap up the number three seed, and uh, so it's going to be a great uh, great game. And you know, like I said, Coach Graham has done a great job there, and uh, and so I, I'm excited for them. And uh, 
and uh, we'll see how that game shakes out this week. You know, the next game we've got and we want to talk about is Pisgah versus Sandrock. And, you know, this may be one of the better games of the week. And, you know, Pisgah comes in uh, and, and you know, man, I tell you what, this Pisgah team is just, they're hard-nosed and, 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 you know, they're kind of like, kind of like a, North Sun Mountain has been to me. If I pick against them, they win, you know. I, and I, I went with North Sun Mountain this week, and, uh, and you know, and, and Pisgah put a whipping on them. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, uh, we talked about San Rock. They came in, and, uh, man, they, they beat the number one team in the region in New Hope 23 to, I mean, 21 to 3. So that that was a huge win for the San Rock team. And, you know, we've talked about they, you know, they've been beat up all year, and it sounds like they're probably getting healthy right now. So what's your thoughts on this Pisgah San Rock, and, and what does Pisgah have to do to be be able to travel over to San Rock and win that game. Oh, I can't wait to watch this game. Talk about evenly matched. Both these teams are so similar. They're both hard nosed. They play downhill. They both have great uh, passing quarterbacks with Audie Smothers from Pisgah and Absolutely. Caleb K. Singer from San Rock. Well, I called one of my friends this week and I said, All right, who would you pick, Pisgah San Rock? And the first one said, Well, I'd go with San Rock. They're coming off that big win. They upset New Hope. <clears throat> So then I called another guy, and I said, all right, who would you pick, Pisgah or Sandrock? He said, well, i go with Pisgah. They're coming off that big win against North Sand. <laughs> so they're, yeah. they're pretty much evenly matched, and I can't wait to see how this game unfolds. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great football game. And like I said, that's probably one of the better games of the week this week. And, uh, you know, that's going to be an exciting game to watch. And, uh, you know, con- I want to congratulate Pisgah and Sandrock on the big wins they had last week. You know, our next game, we've got North Sand Mountain and traveling over to Brindley Mountain. And, uh, you know, North Sand Mountain comes in. Of course, they lost to Pisgah last week. And, uh, you know, they've got a chance. If, if they beat Brindley Mountain this week, they lock up the number two spot in the region. And, uh, you know, so – What's your thoughts on North Sun Mountain, and, and what do they have to do, you know, to, to as they travel over to Brindley Mountain to wrap up that number two seed and have home field advantage? Mm. You know, Brindley Mountain's record is not the best this year, but North Sun still has to stay focused on this game. It's another week. you got to focus on this week before you can go. I know they're excited about playoffs. North Sun, this has been a great year for North Sun, one mm-hmm. of their best years they've had in the past a long time. Yes. So, They'll just have to focus on this week and try to get their starters healthy. I know they have some injuries. Coach Monroe just have to focus on this week and then get ready for the playoffs next week. Yeah. You know, North Southern Mountain, I tell you, they probably probably are the surprise team in our region mm-hmm. this year. Uh, you know, I don't know that anybody would have – would have picked them to finish second in the region. And uh, so, you know, congratulations to C- Coach Moore for a, a great job he's done there, or Coach Monroe, I'm sorry, for the job he's done at, at North Sand Mountain. He, uh, I tell you, you know, the one thing that, you know, they were young last year, and you know, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the season, you know, they had 22, 22. starters back. And uh, so this this sort of North Sand Mountain team is, you know, they're, they're good. They're really good, and, you know, they have played hard all year, and uh, so that's going to be a big win. You know, if they can get that win and lock up that number two seed, that'll be huge for them to get the home field advantage. You know, now we're going to drop down and talk a few college games. Uh, you know, we've got Auburn traveling to Arkansas. You know, Auburn comes in, and, uh, man, they had a – they had a barn burner with Kentucky last mm-hmm. Thursday night, and, uh, man, that thing was back and forth all night. And, uh, you know, uh, I probably, you know, Kentucky had chances to win that game. I, you know, one of the things in that game I thought was the Kentucky's coach, he kind of he kind of blew it there at the end on time yeah. on time management, you know, some of the things they, they had done. But, uh, you know, Auburn, you know, they, they started the white kid at quarterback again, and uh, I tell you what, he uh, – he played good. He played really good. So what's your thoughts on Auburn, Auburn and Arkansas? Well, I don't think we need to uh, let down about Kentucky. They've been getting better and better each year. I know you think Kentucky, you automatically think basketball. They're not really known for their football, but that football program has been improving every year. And Auburn, Auburn's been improving as well. At the start of the season, I know a lot of Auburn fans were just ready to throw in the towel and get ready for next year, but they've been improving – so I think this will be a good game between them and Arkansas. Yeah, I think you're right. That that should be an exciting game. Next game we want to talk about. We got Texas A&M traveling to Ole Miss. You know, Texas A&M comes in, man, and uh, and uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, they got shredded by Alabama. Their Alabama's defense, you know, had three picks and run them back for touchdowns. And uh, man, every time you Texas A&M thought they had something going, you know, man. Alabama's defense would shut them down. You know, Ole Miss comes in, and, uh, man, they were upset by Memphis. And, uh, you know, when we talk about Memphis, this Memphis team is sitting at 6-0 and right now. And, uh, you know, they're no slouch. And mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, so what's your thoughts on Texas A&M and Ole Miss? And this should be a great football game. Well, Texas A&M, you know, they played Bama. And it's hard, no matter who you are, to go up against an Alabama team. Well, I guess it, unless you're Ole Miss, apparently. 
But uh, anybody else, it's hard for them to go up against Bama and get the W. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I know they're uh, – Alabama's been working on their secondary, so that's where that's been their weaker point. So, of course, they were focused on that, and that gave Texas A&M some trouble. But I think they'll be ready for this Ole Miss team. Yeah. And the last game we want to talk about, we've got uh, Tennessee will be traveling down to Alabama this week. And uh, like I said, you know, Alabama's coming off of a big victory traveling to College Station and uh, beating Texas A&M. And, you know, I, we've talked about the defense, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think we can talk much more about them. <laughs> I, their defense is is the real deal. And, uh, you know, and, and Coker is playing – well enough and and didn't turn the ball over to to keep them in the game and uh, so you know this is going to be a big game this week Tennessee had a bye week and uh, you know so they're going they've been practicing hard I'm sure for Alabama so what's your thoughts on Bama Tennessee this week what's, Oh it's rivalry week in Alabama you never know about this game I mean both these both these teams hate each other and they're going to play as hard <laughs> as they can from whistle to whistle and you're going to see an exciting game no matter what year it is with Alabama and Tennessee so Absolutely I tell you it, it, that's going to be an exciting game to watch and uh, you know, Tennessee would love to travel down to Tuscaloosa mm-hmm. and upset Bama this week. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's going to be an exciting week of football. You know, we've talked about all these games now, and, uh, you know, it's time for us to pick. And we've got our guest picker this week. We've got Scott Kurt from First Southern State Bank. They're one of our sponsors this year. And I, I tell you what, uh, we you know, we, we thank them for being a sponsor. And it's good to see you, Scott. Glad you could be with us today. Appreciate you all having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, you guys uh, are one of our great sponsors, and we appreciate all you do for us. And uh, Y'all do yeah. a great job. We're glad to be one of your sponsors. Well, you know, the way we do this, we, we've got a list here, and we, we just go down the list, and we're going to let you pick first since you're our guest. And so we're just going to start, and you just tell us who you were going to pick in this one. You know, our first game, we got five traveling to Collins. Well, who you got in this one, Scott? That's a no-brainer. Five, <laughs> five Red Devils are going to win that ball game. Logan? I think Collins was going to surprise a lot of people, but I feel like that five team, they're in such good shape that they're going to be too much for them in the second half. Oh, absolutely. I'm picking five. I tell you, you know, uh, I am impressed with this Collinsville team, but uh, I tell you, five, you know, they're on a mission, I think. So I, I think five will win this one handedly. Uh, next game, we got Crossville traveling to Sardis. Who you got in this one? This one's a little more exciting now that Crossville's got some momentum, you know, breaking that losing streak. But uh, I've got to go with Sardis. Logan. I'm going to have to agree with him. I'm glad Crossville got that W, and, you know, maybe Crossville pulls the upset if you want to call it an upset here, but I feel like Sardis is going to be too much. Yeah, I'm going with Sardis too, and, uh, you know, like I said last week, I mean, I, I would love to see Crossville win another one here. You know, I know they were excited about getting that first win, but I think Sardis, traveling to Sardis, they're just going to be a little too much. So I'm I'm going with the Sardis Lions this week. Our next game, we got Southside traveling to Fort Payne. Who you got in this one? Paul Ellis. He's a competitor, and even though his team has wrapped up that region, I think he'll have them ready to play. And I've got Fort Payne. Logan? Well, i got to go with the region champs, the Fort Payne Wildcats. You're going to take this one. Yeah, I'm going with Fort Payne, too. I, I tell you, just uh, you know, we talk a lot about Fort Payne this year, but, uh, you know, and Desmond Turner, man, I tell you what, what a great back he is. And uh, I, think, I think Fort Payne will just be a little too much for Southside playing at home, so I'm going with Fort Payne. Our next game, and, man, this is a huge game. We've got Geraldine. Traveling to Plainview. Who you got in this one, Kurt? This ball game's going to be a fight, but that's one thing I've noticed about the Plainview team. They've, they've been fighters all year, so I'm going to pick them at home. All right. Logan? I see this game. It's going to be a low-scoring game, <clears throat> but typically that's worked in Plainview's favor, except for the North St. Mountain game. If you look at it, they usually their defense plays well enough and their offense finds the end zone enough, so I'm going to go with Plainview. Yeah. You know, this is one of those games, man, I struggle with, and, uh, of course, you know, I'm an alumni of Plainview, and it's hard for me to pick against Plainview. And, uh, you know, this Geraldine team has got a great football team. But, you know, and I've said this a couple of times, you know, you know, Plainview has made the playoff or has a really good chance of being in the playoffs, and who would have thought that at the beginning of the season, setting it 0-3. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those gut feelings again, but I, I think the Plainview Bears are going to pull the win this week, and I'm, I'm going with Plainview in this game. Next, we got Eider traveling to section. Who you got in this one, Kurt? I, Eider's had a rough rough time of it the last few weeks, and, but Section's had a rough time of it most of the year. So yeah. I, I think the Hornets are going to win the ball game. I'm going with Eider. Logan? I think Eider's going to pick up their first victory in a while because I know they're needing it and they're wanting it. So I'm going to go with Eider Hornets. I'm going with Eider too. Uh, you know, this Section team, they've struggled this year. And, uh, 
you know, changing coaches. And uh, I tell you, Coach Tinker has done a great job at Eider. And, uh, you know, I think this team, if you know, they're beat up. and uh, But I, I think he'll have them ready to play this week. So I'm going with Eider. Our next game, we got Sylvania traveling to New Hope. Who you got in this one? I think it'll be a closer game than most people think, but, but I'm going to go with New Hope. Logan? I'm going to have to pick New Hope as well. I know they're going to be upset after that tough loss they had to Sand Rock. So. Yeah, I'm going with New Hope too, and, I, and I'm, I'm like Scott. I, I think this game will be closer than most people think. Uh, you know, this Sylvania team, they seem to be improving some each week, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll make a game out of it, but I think New Hope will just be a, just a little too much for them. Next, we got Valleyhead traveling to Woodville. Who you got in this one? Uh, I guess I'll go with Valleyhead on this one. Mm-hmm. Logan? No, Valleyhead, they're they're improving each week, and I think that's this is another week for them to do that and another week to get people healthy. We know that we talked about their depth this year, but I feel like they'll come out on top on this one. Yeah. I'm going with Valleyhead, too. I'll tell you, this Valleyhead team I picked against them last week, and, uh, man, they proved me wrong. And, uh, you know, we talked about uh, Devin Lepps. He, he was our player of the week, and one of the things that Coach Graham told us when we were talking to him on the phone, he said, uh, he said this kid runs like his pants are on fire. And, you know, I, that was a great saying. And, uh, you know, and I, I think he'll be running like his pants are on fire this week, too. So I'm going with Valley Head. Our next game, and, uh, man, this is probably the best game of the week. We've got Pisgah traveling to Sand Rock. Who you got in this one? It should be a good one. I've seen both Pisgah and Sand Rock play. The game's at Sand Rock. It's always hard to win out at Sand Rock, but I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna go with Pisgah. All right. I'm going to pick Pisgah on the road. Logan, well, you, got you know one? they say when you get off the bus at Sand Rock, you're already down 14, so I'm going to have to go with the Wildcats. They're already up 14. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I struggled with this, and this was one of those that I just didn't know who to pick, and I just kind of closed my eyes and marked, and I marked Sand Rock, so I'm going with Sand Rock this week. I think they got a chance to uh, to pull out a big win this week. Next, we got North Sand Mountain traveling to Brindley Mountain. Who you got? North Sand Mountain. Love it. North Sand's going to come out oh, with this one. Absolutely. I, you know, North Sand Mountain is going to win this ball game, and, and they'll wrap up that uh, number two seed in, in the region. And, uh, again, you know, this, this North Sand Mountain team, to me, is the surprise team of the, of the season. So, all right, now we're going to step up and go into, the, into some college games. We've got Auburn to be traveling to Arkansas. Who you got in this one, Kurt? I think Auburn's a road underdog in this game, but I'm going to go with Auburn. All right, Logan, who I'm you got? I have to agree with him. I'm going to pick the Auburn Tigers. Well, I'll tell you what, and this is another one. I struggled with this one, and, uh, you know, this Auburn team, uh, just watching them play Kentucky and, uh, you know, and watching Arkansas, how they played Alabama. I'm going to go with Arkansas Razorbacks this week. I'm picking them to, and if it could be an upset, to, to beat Auburn. Next game, we got Texas A&M traveling to Ole Miss. Who you got in this one? A&M. Logan? I'm going to have to go with Texas A&M as well. I'm going with Texas A&M too. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it seems like Ole Miss has lost a little momentum or something, and uh, I believe Texas A&M will beat them this week. And then our last game, we've got Tennessee traveling down to Bama. Who you got in this one? Bama don't play they, – they don't play well at home this year, but, but, but I'm going with the Tide. Roll Tide, I'm with him there. Yeah, I guess I noticed on my paper I've got Alabama at Tennessee, and I kind of wish that was the case because they do play better at home or on the road. But uh, I think they'll be ready this week. I'm going with Alabama to, uh, in a squeaker here, actually. I think it'll be a lot closer than people think. So, uh, you know, we've talked about these games now, you know, and uh, we've broke them down and we've picked them now. And, uh, you know, guys, we do appreciate you for uh, watching us each week and, uh, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great season, and, you know, it's getting really exciting now, and we hope you guys will be back with us next week. And I'm Monk Blevins. we got Scott Kurt with us and Logan Wright, and we'll see you next week.